Good morning. Day five. Motor skills, the basics. Second, primitive reflex. Moro reflex. Your moro reflex is that startle reflex that a baby has. It's been alerted. It's, it's alarmed. It comes in apparently at the 12th week after birth. A very good explanation of it you can find on Miss Jamie OT, what do retained primitive reflexes look like? And to be honest, that's a really good website because it shows you how to test for them. It shows you what a child with retained primitive reflex looks like when they're walking pigeon toed forwards and walking pigeon toed backwards. And the whole body, you can see, just doesn't work properly. You can also see what happens when they cross their feet and try to touch their toes. They simply can't. And you can see very visibly the child's got retained primitive reflexes. They can't work properly with left and right. So moral reflex, really important. No point in me reproducing what is actually very well presented by this other website. The consequences of you having a retained moro reflex though are it massively increases your anxiety. You're always alert, you're always worried, you're constantly anxious. So any child who is anxious, you ought to go through and do moro reflex work with. It keeps you in a hyper alert state, but because you are in a hyper alert state, it keeps all your senses there. So things like the pupils in your eyes are much wider than they should be. You're not really focusing and refocusing well. You're hypersensitive to touch. You get motion sickness because your vestibular system can't work properly. It impacts on your development of vision. It impacts on your sense of left and right. And so when children get stuck with reversals of P's and D's and B's and whatever, it is to do with your moral reflex. And of course, if you've got those problems, it's going to impact on your spatial awareness and your sense of directionality. You can't really navigate very well with it. So I want to tell you how to sort out the moral reflex, but I want to do it in quite a slow and painful way. There are websites that show you exactly how to do an exercise called the starfish exercise, which will sort out your moral reflex. But I want to suggest to you there are certain cheats you can do that make it more effective. First of all, as you can see, our model, me, on the right side has a glove and a sock. I can feel my right side because I've got a glove and a sock on them, as opposed to my left side, which has no glove and no sock. So in this winter in England, I can feel it's cold. Feeling the difference between left and right is really important to get this reflex integrated. So find a way of doing it. When we were working in schools, we were using elastic bands on one side and not on the other side. Anything that gives you that sense, that feeling, there's a difference between left and right. It's really important. The child needs to get to the stage where they can move arm and leg out on one side at the same time. So you literally just practice taking out arm and leg together. Don't try and do anything more complicated. First of all, do it with your right side and then with the left side. You're just taking out arm and leg. And to begin with, you may have to model that with them. You may have to move their limbs until they can feel how to get both arm and leg moving at exactly the same time. Because otherwise what you get is that the child takes out the arms and then takes out the legs. That's not good enough. They've got to take out arms and legs at the same time. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Next bit, you've got to get the head sorted. So the head has got to turn in really, really as tightly as much as possible and then come right the way out. And it's got to be really way out so that the head's going far out and back again on each move. And so this is the complete move. You're going to start with, let's say, your right arm and leg on top of your left arm and leg, and your head is curled in. 
And then you're going to slowly take your arms and legs out into a starfish with your head completely taken back, as you can see. It is really, really important. And therefore the choice of furniture is really important because if it's not a low chair at the back, the child won't be able to make this move. When the limbs come back in this, this when the limbs come back, the opposite arm and leg are going to be on top. So the left arm and leg this time will be on top. So you can see we start out with the glove and the sock on top with the right side. When we come back, it's the non-gloved side. It's the left side on top. We get all the way curled in. And then again, we repeat it by going all the way out. And when we come back in this time, the right side goes on top. So you're going in and out, alternating left and right sides. If a person can't feel the difference between the left and right sides, it will get very jumbled and it is well worth watching them and seeing. And often you have to replace because they do get the top and bottom half of the body mixed up. You know, and it is a slow process, but getting it right and being very, very thorough with the detail is incredibly important because if you don't, it doesn't seem to get into place. So you can do this on a, the right chair, make sure the child has their feet on the floor, that they can fall right back. Otherwise, use a very big cushion on the floor. But even then, you've got to make sure you can get that head right back and the child's going to come right in. And that's going to take a lot more core strength and many children can't do it. Make sure the child can differentiate between right and left sides because they will get muddled and they're going to need some help to get it right to begin with. Make sure each the child can move each side of their limbs properly and arm and leg together. Make sure the head is going forwards and backwards. And then the whole body move requires it all to work in sequence and you to be alternating left and right sides. It needs to happen for five or 10 repetitions a day. It's not going to take you very long, but it needs to be done slowly and consciously. And it needs to happen every single day for 40 days. That's the way with all primitive reflexes. Don't miss a day. So the reason I would like them embedded in school is I think most parents can manage two days at the weekend, but to do it every single day tires the family out in reality. And also, if it's seen as a good thing by school, then it's much easier for the family to achieve this with children. This is going to change the child's conscious control of so much and move them to the state where they've got a much better sense of where their body is and where left and right are. If this isn't in place, someone really can't learn left and right. So it's really important to get people out of anxiety and so on. So, as usual, my contact details and links where you can get hold of sound therapy equipment. Thank you for listening and I look forward to tomorrow. Bye bye.